Let's take a breath together. So our monthly theme for April is stepping into the unknown. Perhaps it's about 12 months in arrears, but here we are. (laughs) And our weekly talk this morning is the winds of change. And so, through this month of March, we're opening ourselves to, in March, we opened ourselves to Spirit's highest vision of itself as us. We spent the whole month figuring out, exploring how to live in that question. And so, here in April, we're going to take the next step into how to actually live in that question and allow it to unfold, allow the vision to unfold. We're going to explore our commitment to the vision Um, because it's easy to catch the vision and then it's sometimes easy to set it on the shelf (laughs) instead of actually allowing it to evolve as us. And so the timeless wisdom the element from our what we believe statement that we're working with this month is we believe that heaven is within us and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. The evolutionary vision that we're working with from our Centers for Spiritual Living Global Vision Statement may be one of my favorite elements of this whole global vision statement. We envision humanity awakening to its spiritual magnificence and discovering the creative power of thought. A world where each and every person discovers their own personal power and ability to create an individualized life that works within a world that works for everyone. It just profoundly speaks to the unity and the synchronicity and the oneness that we are. And so last week we explored the path less traveled. And today we are going to explore the winds of change. Now, For many of us, (laughs) it feels a bit, you know, there's the wind that kind of caresses your face. And we really don't notice change as much, but it does. It's blowing seeds around and things are getting planted and pollens being dispersed. But we kind of like that wind of change. And then there are the... (laughs) At least here in Nevada County, there are the winds that move our power company to shut off our power so that we don't have fires, (laughs) right? And then there are those winds that I remember from the East Coast where hurricanes blow through and take things with them. Like your roof, your car. (laughs) And I had this vision while I was working on my talk. It, it, It almost feels like this past year, the winds of change. It's like someone took all of the things that we called normal and stuffed it all into a confetti cannon and poof shot it into the air (laughs) and we're all waiting for it to land so we know where our stuff is right (laughs) it's like i i you know somebody the other day was asking me about you know returning to normal here at the center and i had to laugh because i don't even know what that is right i'm still waiting for the pieces of the puzzle 
to land. And the picture's going to be different, folks. That, you know, what we were on March 24th of 2020 is gone. <laughs> it's gone. And that's not a bad thing. It's a wind of change thing. It's an evolution thing. Um, I actually had, what's the word I want? An enlivened discussion that some may have interpreted as an argument <laughs> the other day with someone who was trying to make me understand that humans and dinosaurs inhabited the planet at the same time. Now, perhaps in some element we did, but in this earth element, it's a couple of billion years in between. <laughs> right? So it's like change happens, and we can either embrace it or we can argue with it. We can believe it, or we can make up a story that matches our narrative Right? No matter what's true. Um, I believe Henry Ford is the one that said whether you believe you're right or you believe you're wrong. Or no, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. <laughs> right? That's the power of this creative process. What we believe becomes our experience of reality. Let's be clear. It doesn't change reality. It changes our experience of reality. My favorite Ernest Holmes quote. Many of us believe that our thoughts create reality. This has never been true. Thinking the world was flat never made the world flat. It simply flattened our experience of it. <laughs> okay. Our thoughts do not change reality. They change our experience of it. There's one reality. It is infinite possibility. It is that thing within us that I spoke briefly about before our meditation, that when we know that presence, gratitude is the natural outcome of that knowing. Our gratitude isn't tied to the circumstances of life. So neither is our vision. But our vision is tied to our belief system what shows up as our vision, the manifestation of our vision. And so if you get a vision of spirit's highest idea of itself as you, that your human self argues with, what you will manifest is the argument, <laughs> not spirit's highest vision of itself as you. I want to share a story that I think captures in a really sweet, powerful way the power of being all in. Okay? And so that's really what is, is available to us. When we catch this vision of spirit's highest idea of itself as our life, will we go all in. Now, my understanding is this is actually a true story that happened somewhere in a small town here in the United States, in western United States. I don't know that to be factually accurate, but that's the information that I came across. So, here's the story. One day, a little boy was out on the street going from store to store with a silver dollar and he would go into each store and say, excuse me, do you sell God here? Now, the first store he went into, the store owner thought, I'm being punked. I'm looking for the cameras and just essentially ran the kid off. All right? So he continued. He went in every store he could find in his town. And every time he went in, do you sell God here? He got brushed off. 
until finally it was, he'd been in 60 plus stores. And he went into this store. And it was an elderly storekeeper. The story says elderly, and then later on it says he's about 60 years old. I take exception to that. (laughs) But when he looked at the man and he said, excuse me, sir, do you sell God here? The man listened to him. And he said, well, say more. Why are, you, what are, why are you trying to buy God? Well, it turns out the boy's parents were killed in a car accident. And his uncle was raising him. And his uncle, uncle was a construction worker that had recently taken a pretty devastating fall off of the scaffolding. And he was in the hospital. And he wasn't doing well. And the doctors told the little boy, only God can save him now. And so in his young mind, he just took that. He didn't didn't care if he understood what God was. He didn't go through, what does that mean? He just went about the business with the tools that were available to him at his level of understanding to get God so God could come save his uncle, right? Now, notice there was no quit in this little dude, right? Sixty-plus store owners blew him off, and he kept going. He was all in. And so the storekeeper listening to his story, was moved. He was moved to tears. And he asked him, he said, well, how much do you have? And the little boy held up his silver dollar and he said, I have this. He didn't even know it's a dollar. (laughs) And the store owner said, perfect. That's exactly how much God costs. Perfect. And he gave him a bottle in the story. He gave him a bottle that's called God's Kiss. Now, I actually took some time to research to see if that was a real product. I didn't find that exact name, but I did find a product called God's Sauces, Poseidon's Kiss. And it's a, it's a line of hot sauces that are based on the Greek gods. <laughs> okay. So the little boy bought himself a bottle of God, right? And the man told him, he said, take this back, put it in the room. God will heal your uncle. And so the little boy grabs the bottle and he's gripping it so tight his knuckles are white and he runs all the way back to the hospital and he goes busting through the door into the room. Uncle, uncle, I brought God for you. I bought God. And it's going to save you. Now his uncle is completely unconscious. Right? Doesn't matter. The next day, the world's greatest surgeons were on a flight to that man's room. They arrived the next day, went straight in, conferenced with his physicians looked at his x-rays, analyzed his situation, came up with a different treatment plan. And within a very short amount of time, that little boy's uncle regained consciousness and was, in fact, healed. Until he looked at the hospital bill, which almost gave him a heart attack. And the hospital administrative staff assured him, this is nothing for you to worry about. It's already been paid. And he's like, who paid it? And they handed him an envelope. And in the envelope, uh, backtrack, they informed him that the store owner had paid. And so he and his nephew went back to that store because his nephew knew right where he bought God. (laughs) So they went right back to the store. Well, as it happened, 
the store owner was off on a vacation, but had left a letter. And this is what the letter said. Young man, you do not need to thank me. All the expenses have been paid by your nephew. I wanted to tell you that you are a lucky man to have such a good nephew. To save you, he brought a dollar and went into every store to buy God. Because God was what would save you. He's the one who saved you. God in him is what saved you. Imagine. Imagine not having to have it all figured out. Imagine having the innocence and the commitment of that child the excitement. See, that child was searching to buy God with absolute certainty, with a sense of gratitude. There was no doubt that God was available for sale, that he had the right amount of money. He just had to keep going until he found the right store. There was no doubt, there was no question, there was no quit. What would change in your life if you dared to step 100% into your vision? Into the divine's highest idea of itself as you. Beyond our limited idea of ourselves to know with absolute excitement and certainty to awaken to our magnificence because I assure you as each individualized expression awakens to its magnificence humanity awakens to that degree See, if we extrapolate this idea that heaven is within and we experience it as we become conscious of it, right? The same is true for humanity. It's one body, many cells, right? So as we each do our part to awaken to our magnificence, humanity awakens to its magnificence. And the synchronicity happens. And we don't have to worry about climate change because we will be living from an awareness that honors this planet. We won't have to worry about prejudice and bigotry and homophobia and xenophobia because we will all be living in an awareness of oneness. We will all be living a practice that we choose knowing that it impacts the whole and we choose an alignment with wholeness and oneness and there will be no sense of loss there will be no sense of I don't have enough because we will each be doing what we were divinely created to do What an amazing world. It's right here. It isn't hidden. Are you willing to surrender to the vision? To go all in? And no matter what crazy notion, no matter what doors it takes you through, to say yes to the divine's highest idea of itself as you. Let's take this into prayer. How glorious it is to know, to feel 
the vibration of the one, the infinite, the ever-present allness. To allow this individualized expression of the divine that I call me to know my oneness, to allow the divine to speak its word in, through, and as me. And so I simply open to a revelation, a realization, a making real in human form and experience, the divine's highest idea of itself. I say yes to going all in, no resistance, to being fully, fully in. I celebrate. I celebrate that in the truth of the unfolding of life itself, the spiritual life unfolding as me, nothing can go wrong. And so I align myself. I let go. And I let myself be. So I invite you to embrace this with me as we say together. Amen. Shalom. Amin. Aho. Ashe. And so it is. <laughs>